incredible uh, creative cross-pollination that exists in cinema with filmmakers coming from other parts of the world to Hollywood, Hollywood people going and venturing to Europe to make movies, the influences these filmmakers all had on each other over the years. You are going to experience that in the festival this year. And we're starting off tonight by showing you exactly how that works because the first film that we are showing tonight, No Abres Nunca Es Huerta, uh, is from Argentina in 1952, but based on two short stories by one of the most famous suspense writers in American history, Cornell Woolrich. Those of you who have been coming to this festival since the beginning, and I've seen a handful of you here tonight, it's pretty extraordinary. Thank you. Um, you know that there was probably more movies based on Cornell Woolrich short stories and novels than any other writer in what we now refer to as the classic noir era. Um, but the thing that's amazing about the movie that you were about to see, just a quick backstory. In 2008, my wife Kathleen, who I'm happy to say, this is one of the rare occasions when she is here with me. trip with her to Buenos Aires in Argentina back in 2008, and that turned out to be a magical turning point uh, in my professional life because I met a man there named Fernando Martin Peña, who was the guy who was actually responsible, you cinephiles in the audience know, that 2008 was the year that they found the most complete version of Fritz Lang's Metropolis. <laughs> And Fernando is the guy who did that. He is the one who found it. And he, I remember meeting him and talking about it and everything. And he tugged my sleeve as we were parting. And he said, hey, it's only the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> and since then, Fernando and I have become very uh, uh, good friends. Uh, but more importantly, uh, colleagues in restoring many of these uh, Argentine films from the Peron era that otherwise would have been lost. And the story behind the movie that you are about to see is that its producer-director, Carlos Hugo Christensen, uh, was a very prominent filmmaker uh, in Buenos Aires at the time. They had a very good, thriving film industry. And there was a publishing imprint called the Seventh Circle uh, that was created by two Argentine writers, uh, Jose Luis Borges and Alfredo uh, uh, Bayo Casares. And, um, and uh, Christensen actually read these, William, they were, Woolrich at that point was uh, printed overseas under the name William Irish. And he was a prominent writer in this seventh circle uh, imprint of books. And Christensen actually traveled to New York to meet Cornel Woolrich. He lived with his mother at the Hotel Marseille in New York. And he bought the rights to three short stories that he wanted, that he had read, that he wanted to adapt to film. Uh, so the original story behind this movie is that there were three parts to it. It was a trilogy of short stories. But no movie in Argentina was actually more than two hours long. This film was too long. And so the producers encouraged Christensen to cut out the last story and had it into its own standalone feature. And that is called If I Die Before I Wake, which we are now in the process of restoring as best we can. It, with the original negative is severely damaged and we are trying gamely to get this into acceptable shape for what people now expect with modern technology. And, uh, and I'm happy to say that all of these, um, these films will actually be a double bill on Noir Alley, on Turner Classic Movies in June. They will actually play back to back the way Carlos Hugo Christensen intended back in 1952. Uh, instead of seeing If I Die Before I Wake is the second feature tonight, you are going to see a Hollywood adaptation of a great Woolrich short story called The Boy Cried Murder, uh, The Window from 1949. My colleague Alan Rohde 
will be producing that uh, film. And the second half of the film is about it. But the film that you're about to see, it's two stories in one. Uh, it is photographed by a fantastic cinematographer named Pablo Travanero, who is actually Peter Weinschek, who was actually German and fled the Nazis, and not all those people who fled the Nazis came to Hollywood. Uh, Peter Weinschek went to Buenos Aires instead and became a very, very prominent cinematographer there. And this movie is some of the finest noir cinematography that you will ever see. The film received incredibly positive reviews when it was released. Critics in Argentina said it was the greatest example of pure suspense yet produced in that country. And I'm not going to argue with that. There are passages in this that are as good as anything that you've seen in noir films made in this country at that time or since. Uh, so, I welcome you to the 25th edition. <laughs> UCLA Film and Television Archive, who have been incredible. <laughs> uh, my colleagues at Flickr Alley, who are here tonight. <laughs> uh, reservations out on Blu-ray. Uh, this has been an absolutely fantastic ride this whole time. And it's weird to stand here and feel like it's been 25 years, but looking at this place now and seeing Old familiar faces and totally fresh faces, young people that I haven't seen before. I mean, let's face it, man, I was 40 years old when I started doing this, and I, I'm now an AARP, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it has been a while. So thank you so much for coming out. I hope we see you all week long. Enjoy the show. <laughs> <laughs>